Okay, okay, yes, I get it. All those dislikes that I'm getting for the title and thumbnail combo alone, I understand. You're upset. You don't want to have some random guy on the internet tell you that your favorite hero does not take any skill. Especially not on the basis of something so arbitrary like a difficulty rating proposed by the game itself. So what's the point of me making this video in the first place? Certainly it's not to just mindlessly insult soldier mains all over the world. And no, that is really not my goal. I'm also including Fara players, Mercy One Tricks, and Roadhog mains, your heroes collectively are among the easiest in the game. And I dare say that Torbjorn, Symmetra and Junkrat are all more difficult than any of those heroes previously mentioned. Now I could just cash in on my interaction in form of dislikes and angry comments telling me to sod off, but that would obviously not make for a very fun video. It would be very easy for me to just say these heroes have a higher difficulty rating, thus they are more difficult to play and well, call it a day. But instead I would like to change the way you look at these difficulty ratings. In a community community that associates the act of aiming with skill, Soldier has only been granted a single star in his difficulty rating. How come Soldier only gets a single one, while Zenyatta for example gets three? Well, let's take a look. I'm fairly certain that many players would argue that Soldier takes more skill than Junkrat. After all, Soldier needs to aim at his targets while Junkrat just randomly spams explosives. But consider this. Two players who simultaneously pick up the game, both with a background in shooters, which hero would they have an easier time on? The answer would be Soldier, and that for a number of reasons. Not only is Overwatch marketed as a team-based shooter and thus attracts players who have previously played shooters, Soldier has incredible amounts of margin for error. 25 bullets in his magazine, the only hero that can sprint and by that easily reposition himself, self-sustain in the form of his biotic healing field as well as an ultimate that is literally an aimbot. Junkrat on the other hand does not have that level of reliability with his basic attack since he's using a bouncy grenade launcher as opposed to a hitscan rifle. The only form of limited range reliable damage he has is his concussive mine which doubles as his only form of mobility. You already have more decisions to make as a Junkrat player whether you gamble your mind into a quick kill or keep them to be able to disengage. Only because you can get a quick cheesy kill on someone does not mean that you are going to live to tell the tale. A Junkrat that blew both of his mines to kill a single target has no way of disengaging, making him an easy target where a soldier can run indefinitely. It's always easy to write off a character as simplistic, Junkrat merely spams damage, Torbjorn just hammers his turret, Symmetra only holds left click. But if you describe soldier for what he really does then he suddenly does not sound as skillful anymore. He pokes people with his fully automatic rifle, blows them up with a rocket and then runs away to heal himself before using his aimbot ultimate to win an engagement. And that description is disregarding the amount of effort a high elo soldier player has to put into consistently tracking his targets. Just in that same way, not accounting for the difficulties a Junkrat player goes through is not doing the hero justice. Instead of looking at the difficulty ratings as a means to justify your hero choice and claim that you are a very skillful player because you decided to main one that has a lot of stars, see them as a level of ease to get value out of them. Getting value out of Soldier is very easy because of all the margin for error that he provides. Getting value out of Farah is easy because she can only be countered by a select minority of heroes who can even contest her in the sky. Getting value out of Mercy is easy because her existing automatically turns a 6v6 into a 7v6 provided the enemies are not running a Mercy themselves. Meanwhile, getting value out of Torbjorn is very difficult because his turret is stationary. A Torbjorn player has to put a decent amount of thought into his and his turret's positioning because he does not have any mobility at his disposal. I mean, most of us would get angry with a player that decides to play Symmetra on payload or hybrid attack, right? Why do we get angry over that? Because countering her on attack is more easy than on defense. The kit that she provides was not made for this situation, and even in an optimal scenario, a Symmetra that faces off against enemies with half a brain cell at their disposal has to put a lot of thought into where she places her deployables and how and when she can allow herself to engage. Whether you find it difficult to hold M1 on your enemies or not, getting value out of Symmetra and Torbjorn is not easy and I think we all can agree to that. So if we go through all the heroes and take a look at their difficulty ratings while keeping in mind that they represent how easily you can get value out of them, it starts to make way more sense. A lot of heroes with no mobility and no defensive abilities have a higher difficulty rating because their positioning needs to be flawless. Zenyatta is a 3 star difficulty hero despite the fact that he uses projectiles which are more forgiving in aim than hitscan weapons. And that's because he has absolutely no margin for error in his positioning with his lack of mobility. Furthermore, a Zenyatta that is not able to multitask well won't be able to keep his harmony and discord orb uptime high while not neglecting his damage duties. A lot of decision making goes into the gameplay of a good Zenyatta. 
Reinhardt is also an interesting one. While in high elo and in pro play, Reinhardt players are those who dictate the pace of the battle and a good Reinhardt can make or break a match, he only has a 1 star difficulty in his rating. And that's because no matter how you look at it, drawing benefit out of a walking shield is very easy. Put a few teammates behind him and you've already successfully managed to get value out of him. D.Va on the other hand does not have a whole lot of survivability anymore because her defense matrix does not last very long and her hitbox is massive, hence the 2 star difficulty. Sombra is boasting 3 stars because she does not only require very good tracking on optimal range, her mobility is not universally amazing either. There are a lot of things to pay attention to as a Sombra player when talking about map control, health pack control, target priority and positioning. She is just universally a very difficult hero to get value out of and that's where the 3 star difficulty rating comes from. And for many other heroes there seems to be a lot of room for argument. People say that Hanzo does not take any skill because of the tree trunks that he shoots for arrows and well his scat arrow. But reality is that if he really was that easy to get value out of, then we would not be dealing with the meme of the useless Hanzo player that does not kill anything. Only because there are heroes, particularly projectile ones, that get lucky kills on occasion does not mean that you can easily get value out of them without providing a level of skill that creates consistency. Heroes that are only situationally viable often have a higher difficulty rating, whereas those who can be used more universally are given a lower rating. That does not mean that there is no level of expertise that goes into them. You cannot discredit a soldier player's flawless tracking only because he plays a hero with a 1 star difficulty rating. Now I have to admit that a personal gripe of mine is the level of effectiveness that these 1 star heroes provide in the hands of a skilled player. I personally often get angry when I get killed by a Farah or a soldier player. Not necessarily because I want to discredit their skill, it is very easy to tell a power player to only get a lucky kill by spamming rockets or pulling a hit and run and those who display extraordinary levels of expertise. However, I find it concerning how easy it is for a skilled player is to abuse those hero designs. Taking characters who were meant to make the entry experience easier by providing kits that work more universally and allow players to get value out of them more easily and making them seem almost outright broken by taking that to the extreme. But this already concludes today's video on why Soldier 76 is the easiest hero in Overwatch to get value out of. I hope you enjoyed what you heard today and if you did then do let me know by dropping me a like on your way out. Subscribe if you want to see more and I hope to see you all next time.